education type of stuff. It's going to be all about exactly what you need to know when registering for your first year classes, whether it's specifically at Wellesley or probably even other institutions. A lot of my advice is going to be just based on my experience and stuff I've heard from my friends. So just keep that in mind and make sure you take everything I say with a grain of salt. The first thing I want to say is start looking at classes really, really early on. For example, Wellesley does this thing where they have a course catalog that releases in, let's say, April of your a previous academic year. So let me explain that a bit more clearly. So during my first year at Wellesley, and about like, I want to say March, April, was when they released the course catalog for courses I'd be registering for in the fall of my sophomore year. So that for you guys is going to be really, really early and it's a really good tool because you can use that right away to start looking what are classes that are offered, potentially how many seats are left remaining since registration has closed and all that kind of stuff. So definitely if you can start really early looking at the catalog, seeing are there classes or departments that your high school never taught or offered. For example, for me, I didn't really know what ANTH was. Um, at all. I feel like I still don't really know what it is, but I do want to take forensic anthropology someday. So that's the hope is being able to take that or having the opportunity to do like lab classes, which because of COVID, some schools couldn't really have labs. My AP Bio class certainly didn't have any labs during COVID. So being able to come to Wells and see like all the different lab classes they offered was really, really cool. Second, I would say is the rule of four. Now the rule of four is gonna vary depending on who you hear it from, but definitely feel free to ask people their thoughts. My rule of four when it comes to picking your classes are you have four classes for your freshman year at Wellesley. You are not allowed to take more than four classes during your very first semester. So because of those four classes, uh, my recommendation, and keep in mind that Wellesley's first semester is pass-fail, which I know a lot of people find that crazy, but it's a really useful tool. So the first class is one that you know is going to challenge you, but you want to still take. I would say for me, that ended up being BizChem 116. I knew that class would be a hard class, but it's something I was really, really interested in and wanted to take either way. The second class you want to do is one that you would be just for fun. So for me, that ended up being Education 215, which was all about, when I at least took it, it was about understanding and improving schools. Now it's something different. I don't quite remember what it was, but I saw that class and I saw, decided, you know what, like, this seems really, really interesting. I don't know how it relate to anything I want to study, but I think I would really enjoy it. So that's one that I just signed up for or applied to decide to. The next or the third would be one that's for your prospective major or what you're thinking of majoring in. So this depends person to person, right? Like when I applied to Wellesley, I think I applied as either biochem or neuroscience. So I would thought like, okay, having to take basic and I'm pre-med, so taking like a basic bio and chem class is of course necessary. So the way I did it was I was like, okay, this Chem 116, it's an intro bio, intro chem class taught together. So that could be both something that really, really challenges me, but also something that's for my major that I think will be really interesting. Keep in mind, so I'll talk more about this Chem 116 later, just to help clarify a few things, but just to put it out there, it does count as two classes. So if you do it, you can only register for three, but I'll go more in depth like later on in the video. The fourth thing you want to keep in mind is that one of your classes should ideally be targeted towards a distribution requirement. So for me, that was the language class that I took, which was Spanish 201. I, in high school, or I've been taking Spanish since I was in seventh grade. In my high school, I took CIS Spanish through the University of Minnesota my senior year, and then I took my bilingual seal in Spanish. So, I'm so according to that, I am in fact bilingual. Unfortunately, I didn't test out of Spanish, so I ended up having to retake and do Spanish 201, which I have mixed thoughts on. Did it feel like a relatively easy class for me? Very much so. Was it still a class? Do I feel like I learned? I don't know. I think that's variable. But I do think that being able to get that class out of the way and just have it be like knowing it's for 
like a requirement for me to graduate and having to take it. I'd rather take it now when it's pass fail versus waiting till like senior year to do it. So I think just think about like if you have a language requirement that you still have to do or you know like your arts class, you are not an artsy person, you need to take an arts class, do it then. Or if you know you couldn't do science to save your life, take a science class, so regardless of what it is, because there are so many distribution requirements, just looking at what those requirements are, looking at what may be more challenging for you, and then trying to find a class that fits would be a really great spot. In general, those rules can change from person to person, so please feel free to ask. Literally, like there's so many different outlets you could do, whether it's looking on Rate My Professor to learn about specific professors and classes, asking like Wellesley FAQ pages to be like, hey guys, like, can I please get your thoughts on this? Everyone is happy to help. And when you go to other schools, I'm sure there are the same thing, like different social medias that you can use. And if you know people being able to ask them, if you go to Wellesley specifically, feel free to leave a comment or feel free to reach out to me and ask. I'm happy to help you with whatever I can. But just make sure you're figuring out like what having a general idea of what you'd be interested in because that's really helpful. Next thing to think about is trying to find a really good balance of your classes. So this is something I think I did really, really well on my first year um, was having a balance of humanities versus STEM classes. So what that means is of the four classes, taking like two STEM, two humanities, just so you're not overloading yourself with the amount of labs you have to do or the amount of um, extra time you're putting in because you also have office hours that you're going to on top of your normal class hours. So for me, what that meant was my first semester having my humanities be Spanish and education and then having my lab class or my like science E field, STEM field being my BizChem 116 class. Then when it came to my second semester, this ended up being um, Chem 205 and Math 215 versus Spanish 202 and um, my first year writing class. Uh, the first year writing class is interesting because that's kind of another thing to talk about is your first year writing class gets assigned. So you get assigned a writing class in a semester. I was assigned dream narratives for my second semester, so luckily I didn't have to include that. If you end up having to take your writing class for semester, that's not a bad thing. A lot of people really like having it for semester. Something to keep in mind is that it is mandatory credit non. So the difference between taking it first semester and second semester is that first semester you have the opportunity to get in the range between C and D. Versus for credit non, I believe you need to get like a C or higher to get credit. I might be mistaken about that, but just so you know, it is like that. So regardless, think of it as like, the way I thought of it is regardless, that class was past fail. So I was glad that it was second semester for me. Um, I think if you don't, they also have you rate. I don't know if you guys have done this before, but you rate the type of writing classes that they offer and went, which ones you want to take. I personally got dream narratives and I thought I'd be really interested in it. And then I heard about everything people were saying about that class. And I was like, I realized I just was not interested in what that class was teaching. And I didn't think it would really suit what I wanted to do in the future. So for me, it was like, I'm not going to learn that much in that class. So I reached out to whoever was head of that department or in charge of all of that. And I explained my situation and they helped me find a better fit, which ended up being China past and present. So I think, again, writing classes can be tricky. If you get it first semester, that is something to realize is like that's one of your four classes already chosen for you, um, which can definitely make it harder, but also realize that like, you have four full years at Wellesley, like there's plenty of time to figure out or move classes around. Going off the vein of like having a balance between your humanities and your STEM classes is realizing like classes are gonna have stuff out of class time that you need to do. So what I mean by that is, let's take some art classes. A lot of art classes, now I'm not an art person, I have a lot of art friend majors, but what they tell me is like they have classes on days and they also have studio time on days. So I might be wrong, but my understanding is like it's like lab where you have class like three days a week, but you also have to go to lab. That's like a three and a half hour block of time that you will be in lab and you will be doing so. So that's something to realize is like on top of you, basically like for Chem 205, it was like coming to class Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then also going to lab Monday afternoon. And on top of that, it's like, okay, well, if you need help, you need to go to office hours. 
So then going to office hours, like anywhere from zero to three times a week for that class. I know in my experience, I've always really, really valued office hours. I think it's an amazing opportunity for you not only to get to know your teacher, but also to be able to learn what you actually want to learn. And I know that sounds dumb, but if you're going to a school like Wellesley, where it's like you're here to learn, like, please take advantage of office hours. And there's so many other things too, like whether it's like chem cafes, which I still haven't gotten to go, which I really do want to go. It's like, that's just the reality is everyone's trying to do things and everyone's here to help you do those things. Even this might come off as weird to high school students, but something I always had fun doing was <laughs> if I was at like in the science center and like I had an exam that day or something after my first semester, I'd go to Mr. Matthew's office and see if he was there so I could get like a high five or like a thumbs up or just like after having classes with professors or even when you're still having classes, going to them being like, hey, like, I need like emotional support and getting a high five or like getting some chocolate or like just being like, hey, how you doing? Um, really building their relationships with those professors is gonna come in handy and that comes from spending time outside of class to get to know them. You definitely don't realize how much time you spend on school outside of class until you get there and you're like, oh, it's not three hours a week, it's more like 10. Like you are constantly doing stuff. And if it isn't directly in class, it is at the library or studying with your friends and all of that. So just keep that in mind when, again, when you're looking at classes, because you don't want to have four classes that you're going to be spending like five, six hours on just doing like class stuff. You want to be able to have that freedom to choose like, OK, well, I don't need to do writing today or OK, I don't really need to do Spanish this week as long as I can offload it over the weekend. That type of flexibility is really, really helpful. Another piece of advice I have is, especially for Wellesley specifically in your first semester, it's pass fail. And something everyone is gonna tell you is that it is pass fail and you need to relax. And I think that is so valid. I also think that that looks very different for everybody. I think there's a lot of people out there that'll look at you and say like, you're doing too much, you need to calm down. But in reality, like they don't know you and they don't know what is too much for you or what is on par for you. Like only you know that. So if you're doing your past fail semester and what looks like a lot to some people is barely anything for you, then you do you, okay? I just ask that like during your past fail semester, you make sure you're putting yourself first and not your classes because that is quite literally the entire point. So if that means instead of studying like 80 hours a week like you did in high school you're studying like 40 then great do that just make sure you're putting yourself first okay that is that's all i want you to do okay so now i'm going to transfer to talking a little bit more about taking advantage of your opportunities while you're there at wellesley um so especially when it comes to first year classes or just classes in general i think that's something I was actually pretty proud of myself for was looking ahead being like okay I'm just gonna go for this and see what happens whether it was with this chem 116 or my education class so what I mean by this is there are gonna be some classes where you can't just freely register for them without getting pre-approved or applying this happened for both my education and my biochem class so the way it worked for this chem is I if I remember correctly we got information about it before and then we had to like submit an application asking, answering questions of like, how was our history with collaboration? What have we been looking for in classes? What are we interested in? And so when I saw BizCom 116, which was the double lab, I immediately was like, I need to take that class. And for me, it was because I knew a couple things. One, I was pre-med. Two, I knew I was interested in going into biochemistry or neuroscience. So that would be a really good base to help me figure out like, okay, is this something I do really want to go into? Or am I more like, oh, let's look at other things. Three, when it comes to my science background, I wouldn't say I have a very strong background because of COVID especially. I felt stronger with chem than I did with bio. I took chem sophomore year of high school and bio junior year of high school. And I feel like go like if you asked me to remember anything I probably wouldn't have remembered anything so I was like okay I know this class is designed for students who don't have like fives on their AP exams and I know that I would do well in that kind of setting I also had reached out on Wellesley FAQ and asked like 
what are the teaching styles like do people are is it really really slideshow heavy is it really like i handwrite my notes and you have to just copy it verbatim heavy learning about what that was like in the professor style was also really helpful the actual layout of the class was that we would meet monday tuesday thursday friday for from 9 55 to 11 10 and then you had lab either Monday or Tuesday for three and a half hours. And then everybody also had a mandatory workshop, which is on Fridays from one to three. That's the way it was for my semester. We also had office hours offered twice a day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I can't remember if we had office hours Friday or not, but most people went to every office, anywhere from like two office hours a week to every office hours. There are two professors for lecture and two for lab. So you, I had Professor Radhakrishnan for chemistry and then, or like as our chemistry professor, and Professor Matthews for biology. And then for lab, we had Professor Matthews and Professor Oakes. So in total, we had three professors. And on top of that, we also had our SI who ended up being Ren. So it was like, we had four like sources of instruction on top of having like our textbooks or like Biskembigs, which I don't know if they're going to do that next year. I don't know if Biskem's offered next year. I assume it is. So I knew for me going into college, something I would really need is to have like a really set structure to my days in order to help me with that transition. And so seeing Biskem and seeing what realistically that workload would look like and knowing my learning styles, I was like, that's going to be a really good fit for me and what I need going into it. I would say, looking back, I do not regret taking this time. I'm really glad I did, and I know that's probably the most I've ever learned in a class before and never been challenged in a class before. I do think that it is not the best fit for everyone, and I think that if you do, if you're interested in taking it, be aware that it is a lot of work, and I don't say that lightly. Like I went to a very, very rigorous and work heavy high school and it was like right on par with my high school which was shocking because I expected it to be easier and it was not <laughs> I was also told college would be easier than my high school and it was mm, that was not really true I'd say rigor wise it is besides Biscuit 116 Again, it's definitely one of the best decisions I've ever made for myself. It's not the best decision for everyone. So just keep that in mind. When it came to my education class, I had been looking for classes that would fit. I wanted a Wednesday only class so that I wouldn't really like interfere with BISCAM. That is another thing to realize is BISCAM did interfere with a lot of classes because of the lab or and or the workshop. For me because I was a Monday lab and a Friday workshop and at Wellesley classes are like Monday Thursdays or Tuesday Fridays and sometimes the Wednesdays also there so it was fun I found an education class that I thought was really, really interesting and it was on Wednesdays only from like 9 30 to 12 and I was like yo that's great like that looks really interesting I like the topic I've been a teacher for years so this is something that hits close to home and I've been a tutor and like I can really see myself enjoying this class. And so that class you have to apply for. So the way you do it is you have to get permission of, permission by instructor to, and this happens for a lot of the education classes, it's permission by instructor to enroll. So I filled out a thing and I talked about like, I know I'm only a first year, but I have been in the education field when it comes to sports and I've also been a tutor for years. And it, I'm really, really passionate about what the power of education has for people and what different types of people as teachers can bring to the table so I filled out that and then I think it was like less than a week before registration completely forgot I filled this out by the way I filled this out in like June or July and I registered for classes in like August and I completely forgot I filled that out and then I remember like a week before like being really stressed trying to figure out like okay what am I going to take with this chem and Spanish because I need to figure out something here 
and then getting an email being like, oh yeah, like you're accepted in this new class. And I was like, oh, this is amazing because now I can take this class and it might schedule will work beautifully and everything will work out. So at the end of the day, just like keep in mind that some classes you do have to apply for. I guess my biggest piece of advice is don't let that scare you. Even if you're like, it's your first semester, first year, don't let that intimidate you and think like, oh, well, I'm just a first year. Like they're not going to accept me because I mean, they're definitely going to get accepted if you, if it's shown that you're interested and the professor sees that like, sees that they, or thinks that like, hey, that could be a really good asset in this class. So just go for it and really try to show that like, that's something you care about and don't really be afraid of anything. Okay, so I believe that is about all the advice I have for today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to answer. You can reach out whether it's in the comments of this video on my Instagram, I'm sure plenty of people have that. Or you can also just reach out through Wellesley FAQ. Like there's plenty. If you don't go to Wellesley, I hope this still helps enough. Please, again, I'm sure they have their own social medias that you can reach out to or people. But that is, again, all for today. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for future videos. Bye!